task for him today against the very best player in the world. So what's he got here, JJ, from his first break of the match? Well, it looks like a pretty easy safety behind the purple five and the black eight. Sending the one near the nine. And he's going to love this. So FSR comes into this uh, match with a a very difficult situation. He's got to look like he's going to kick two rails between the blue two and the green six. He's got, he's got an avenue there to maybe get at the one, maybe get at the back of the one. He'll want to hit this with some speed. He's got two different two rail kicks. He can kind of zigzag the cue ball off of both long rails. I like the kick he's going to take on here. The top rail, the right side rail coming right at the one. And again, should be hit with some speed. James Aranas recently turned 31. Ranked number 75 in the world, but for various reasons, his tournament activity has been quite limited over the last year or two, so not really reflective of how good a player he is, that ranking position. Yeah, very capable player, and he's won some big tournaments before in the U.S., of course, so much going on in the Philippines now, and it seems like pools kind of got rekindled there in the Manila air area. Funny shot here. The green six is a little in the way of the cue ball path. Now, James, I know him pretty well, and super nice guy. Of course, nice is not the objective here this week, but he's the type that if he can get settled, he tends to start off a little nervous. Little light there with the cue ball. So another safety coming. Yeah, perhaps backing up what you were saying, it did look like a nervy shot. He is out there on the, I was going to say the main table. It's the only table, of course, but no hiding place out there and up against very much the man of the moment. Looks like he's going to try and follow the ball up on the 5-8. That's going to get away from him. He's going to hope the four falls. And a bit of a mistake here. Sanchez Ruiz then also 31 years of age and not just the world number one, but the runaway number one at the moment. He's got a huge lead at the top of the rankings. Yeah, I had a top American player hit me up after, I believe it was the PLP, asking me what is the difference with FSR and the rest of the players at the moment. And of course, the break shot has something to do with it, but I, I think he just is winning in every category, it seems like, from match to match. And I think it set the luck aside as well. I, I just mean the actual skill territory. Oh, that looked like a bad hit to me. The, the five ball cut tremendously to the right and for that to happen now Marcel rarely ever loses misses a yeah I'll tell you that was close yeah in terms of making contact with the eight before the five yeah mm. just the way they sat it didn't look possible to cut the, the purple Thank five you. that high of the pocket on the long rail I think we're gonna have another look at that 
And I think you've got a pretty strong point there. Let's look again. Yeah, look how it sits. Can you possibly even cut the five ball that much? Yeah, yeah to me that was that was looked like a foul to me, but that looks pretty conclusive. Yeah, that's you'll true. see the eight. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's gonna make stopped. a huge difference on the outcome of this rack, but these players definitely and the referee want to get it right. We should say, of course, in the referee's defense, it's so much easier when you're looking at it in slow motion like that. The ball's so close together, they're traveling at much greater speed than that. Yeah, and Marcel and Dez, they do a fantastic job, so. Okay, a little short here. I guess he's gonna come down for the seven in the side. We saw those side pockets, uh, they were very brutal yesterday, so early in the match you want to be pretty tidy if you're going into the middle so important for our runners now to win this rack after sanchez Ruiz handing him that unexpected opportunity got to show him that if he opens the door to him he's capable of capitalizing you could see a little shake of the hand there a little trimmer in the body mm -hmm as he was down on that seven ball. So, found himself back at the table sooner than he would have expected and stayed there for the rest of the rack. Aranas leads FSR 1-0. Let's hear from this man from the Philippines. Of course, I'm so happy to be here at the Whirlpool Master. It's like a dream come true for me. When I found out that I'm going to play FSR, I was so excited. I don't feel any nervous at all when I found out, but I know that when I get to the table, that's where all the pressure comes. I will give all my best to, uh, to my country and to all the people who supported me. I come all the way from the Philippines, not just to be part of this. I want to win it. How would you describe him as a player, Jeremy? Oh, he's a very talented player. And, you know, one of the first Filipino players that really came with better cueing, you would say, not the pump stroke like the Philippines are known for uh, throughout the years. And like I said earlier, super nice guy. Of course, nice, not on the agenda here this week. This is trying to get W's and eventually hoist that title. Well, if anyone has proved that you can be a super nice guy and get those W's, it's the man he's facing today. But it's Aranas leading, 1-0. Yeah, and Aranas, very skilled player as well. Like I said, and once he starts to get comfortable, he becomes very dangerous. Missed the one in the side. No movement on the nine as of yet. We've had a ton of it in day one. He's got, even though the two is hanging, a little awkward cueing. And probably wants to hit this fairly easy. Oh, this is not what he wanted. And you could see a little tremor in the arm and, and probably the soft shot, not the best recipe for those nerves. Yeah, we've seen it manifested in a number of shots already in this match. Backs up what you were saying. That that's key for him to overcome those nerves. A little bit of a stretch there, but now going for the extension, maybe. He's going to use the crutch here, the bridge. Or rest, as they say. You and I were together in Leicester just a couple of months ago, Jeremy, for the Premier League pool, which FSR won. There were times in that where he was stringing together one performance after another of just about as good as you can possibly play. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, after a very extended Derby City Classic, he kind of got in a little later. Maybe it was Vegas. I can't remember, but... But uh, day one wasn't his best. But then after that, he just showed what he's been doing here on the calendar for some 18 months. 
You know, one thing I found out there that I had no idea, and he had eye surgery last year, and uh, I've had some experience with a family member, actually, that plays pool, had eye surgery, their game went way up, and not really dealt with many pros in that regard, but I wonder if that has a little something to do with, with, with his outcomes and his finishes here, here of late. Oh, you can see a little shaky there. Definitely moved on the shot. And I was going to say the foul shot in rack one is maybe the biggest miss hit we've seen from FSR in, in all a that long time. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when was that eye surgery then? Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but it was sometime last year, I think prior to all those big wins as well. Well, that might be just about the best ongoing advertisement for eye surgery we've ever seen. He's been a capable player for a number of years, we know that, but to see the leap forward he's taken over the last 18 months or so. We have the world ranking system now, of course, but prior to that, have you been making a list of the top 10, maybe even the top 20 players in the world? I don't think he would have been in there. And now to be the runaway number one so soon after that. An astonishing achievement, but just again, every time we build him up so far in this match, Jeremy, he goes and does something like that. Yeah, and you know, I can tell just the timing's off just a hair to start for FSR, and that's why he fouled in that shot in, in game number one, because it did require some side spin. Anytime you're swerving the ball and the timing's off, it can certainly get away from you. And so, despite his own apparent nerves and a couple of mistakes, on his side, Aaron Ass looks as though he's going to lead 2-0. And I think everyone knew about FSR as far as his talent. I think many labeled him more talented than his running mate, David Alcady. Just David had a little more know-how on how to cross the finish line. But FSR has shown us something special in every possible way. Consistency, coming with a great shot, winning all the battles. But not going to script so far. Long way to go, of course, race to nine. But Aranas really needed a good start as he tries to defy the odds against this man. Changes to the format, back to 16 players, 14 of them qualifying directly from the world rankings, and then a couple of wild cards. Aranas is one of those. Race to nine in this opening round, but then the quarterfinals tomorrow and the semifinals in the early play on Saturday will be race to 11, all leading up to a race to 13 final. 30 second shot clock in operation for the whole event. You do, of course, have the extension option in each rack. And it's the winner breaks format throughout. A lot of people reckon this title ranks just after the World Championship and US Open as the most prestigious ones to win in the game. I'm assuming that's something you agree with. Yeah, I mean, the field itself right. tells you how incredible the event is. It is 30th year now. Uh, and it's been, you know, a cornerstone in our sport for a long time. Okay. Missed the one in his last to get a ball down. Um, what a, what a, he'd like to keep that one the rest of the, of the match. I know he didn't come away with a shot, but very nicely struck. You know, the nerves we talk about in all these big events, and, and certainly early in the events more than late, it seems like anyways, but Push the main the thing about the nerves is you're going to miss a ball in here, here and there because of it, but you can't let the nerves, you know, you it's lose the brain. System. That's the one you can't lose when you get nervous. Interesting shot here. He must be playing for the two real kick shot on the push out. You wouldn't suspect FSR taking on this jump shot. And if you're new to nine ball, the push out is the shot after the break. James, please the player at the table has a option to push the cue ball out anywhere. Doesn't have to contact the ball. They can contact the ball. And then the incoming player has the option to take the shot or pass it back. It's got to be a two rail kick to the bottom side of the two. Trying to send the two up table. Bring the cue ball back towards the three, four. False oh, missed it. 
Huge mistake Falling. there because not a difficult kick as far as the contact. Thanks, start the clock. FSR sizing up the 3 9 up in the corner. It is a possibility. Yeah, again, if you're new to the game, so long as you hit the lowest value ball remaining on the table first, any pot is legal and keeps you at the table. Of course, if the ball you pot is the nine, Extension, please. it's rack over. And that's what you're alluding to there. Yeah, and it looks like uh, I was going to say with a, a difficult layout and a couple of mistakes early, we'll see if FSR can get out here and get some confidence going, but looks like a 3-9 all the way up the table. Looks like the type of shot he's got to hit maybe not too, too much pace. Maybe he's plays the four as well. He might cannon into the pink four. Oh, he's missed this. Surprising miss, to be honest with you. And just because with the ball in hand, you, you got to believe he uh, was very confident in making that. Looks like he's going behind the pink four. Um, ooh. Didn't hit it his best, but did get the snooker. You wouldn't expect it at all as we see this missed combination again, but Sanchez Ruiz seems to be finding it just as much an effort to settle into this match at the start of a new big event as his much less experienced opponent. So the longer Aranas can keep FSR at zero, well, that could be a really big factor in this. An awful lot of balls to have been missed already at such an early stage. Oh, what a nice hit here. And this maybe is an example of what I talked about earlier. Talked about it with a few other players as well. All the situations where he's kicking at a ball, the tactical, he's gotten, you know, gotten through them uh, the last year, year and a half, and now made a beautiful shot, and the three ball leaks a little bit. So big opportunity for James. Pretty much a all-rounder. He's got good results behind him in one pocket and banks divisions at various events. So the full array of skills at his disposal. Yeah, he's ran the cue ball for the side and nothing wrong with that, but ending up short with the seven, eight up table, a lot of congestion to get back on the six. Knocking the five in, the purple five in the side, not the problem. You may have to take a pretty long shot on the six here. Like just come two rails maybe in between the seven, eight to the head string maybe. Extension cold. Difficult angle here, not much angle at all. Type of shot that the players don't really want to go forward on on the slick table. It's more of a stun. Wow, what, what a stroke. Yeah, that's just the sort of shot that will settle those nerves a bit. Real confidence builder, and how much more of a boost would it be if you can go 3 0 up here? He would have expected at the start of the match for him to find himself in that position, he would have had to be flawless in the early exchanges. That hasn't been the case at all, and yes, it looks as though he's going to open that big gap early on. Yeah, and a big gap to where. Like you said a moment ago, he should get more settled, especially if this third rack had some nice shots to get this this third rack, this third win. Well, we saw all sorts of unexpected things on day one here in Brentwood. 
And this wasn't in the script either. James Aranas leads 3-0. that has been without any breaking runs or even producing his best Ready talked about his James. nerves at the start of the match they've been on show yep. but if anything's going Frank to settle them James Aran has to break. And it's he's looking at his more illustrious opponent and see how he's struggling and of course taking a look at the scoreline which reads as I say 3-0 Lucky there, had a beautiful Moment. break off again with the one on the side. That is the dilemma at times. It stop. does give us a golden break, but it does serve up the cue ball for your opponent as well. Doesn't have much history in this event. FSR heavily beaten in the first round by Shane Van Boning back in 2017. Played again a couple of years later and again lost his opening match to his great mate David Alcady. But did make an impact last year. Beat Mika Immonen and Alban Ocean. He was then defeated by Mieszko Fortunski in the quarterfinals. And the red three must have a, a bit more pocket than I initially assumed. And a good look there. Uh, FSR in a prime position with ball in hand and try and take care of the red three and the pink four and then track up table for the five, six, seven, and eight ball later. And I'll tell you, I was took a little restroom break on on our commercial and FSR and his partner David Alcady were were in there in, in there with a lot of communication between the two presumably though it was all in Spanish so you can't tell us what they were saying I, you know I'm from Texas so I picked <laughs> up a word here and there but so he wants to track all the way down here he doesn't want to get funny where he has to go into the seven too much there is David Alcady, and of course, those two have great memories of this venue. This is where they won the World Cup for Spain last summer, and they'll be defending us in their home country in just a few weeks' time. It really feels like that is going to be an extremely special fortnight. Spanish Open at the same venue just before us. Oh, nice shot there, and that was more the timing I'm used to seeing from FSR. Very flowing stroke and very committed through impact. Never really gives in too much, and I think that's definitely no coincidence why he's had so much success. If he gets out here, we'll see another big part of his success with the break shot in rack number five. Okay, so this is much more like us. Aaron Ass, a bit unfortunate to scratch off the break. Sanchez Ruiz has extracted full price. Francesco Sanchez Ruiz. As the nine wriggles in, he closes to 3 1. Linsky arriving at the venue. He'll be next up, taking on Zheng Zhao Hui. And I'll be following on straight after the completion of this one. First round will be all done and dusted by tonight. And there is his young opponent, delighted to be here after getting the wild card. And then quarter-final day tomorrow, semi-finals and final on Saturday. This is someone who's been well accustomed to being there for the final day Francisco of big Sanchez events over the last break. 12 months or so. Trailing he's got some early work on here. One. He's made a start, though. Close to 3-1 down. And this is our first look at his break. Yeah, 
what we've seen so often. The one in the side did, does come away with the shot on the three. A little near the rail with the cue ball, but decent cueing. And just got to figure out the path to the pink four. Does he stun around? Does he elevate a little bit and stun around the black eight and green six for a little bit of a sh shot on the four? That's what he's going to do. Great to see him getting his rewards now in terms of titles, but also with prize money as well. He's kept going year after year, making a living as best he can, but the good times are rolling now. He won well over a quarter of a million dollars in 2022. He'd never won more than 36,000 in a year prior to that. You look from matchroom events alone, he's won two, three hundred thousand dollars in the last 12 months. You can see there 20 balls a piece for both players through four and a half racks. Really taking some concern here. And I guess he's, he's pretty straight on the green six to where he's going to have to take a bit of a heavy angle on the seven. Yeah, nice look there. So maybe just a little concern from the seven to the black eight. He's doesn't want to have too much stretch either. He may draw this back a few inches. This is odd, uh, uh, you know, for something that looks fairly simple. He's looking to play a couple rails, so maybe a third off, yeah, rail to take a little bit of a cut shot on the eight. I thought he might play from underneath the black eight here. This shouldn't get away from him, no matter which way he decides to play it. Oh, that looks light. And he caught the rail first. He's not going to be happy with that, not one bit. And kind of shot in between there, in my opinion. Didn't really commit to one way or the other. Now he could bank this cross corner to the upper left corner and kind of hold the cue ball behind the nine. I think that's the shot he's going to play. Oh, he let it go. So a huge mistake trying to get a little too much out of the snooker. And that's what the jump cue will do to you sometimes, Michael, is it'll make you kind of squeeze the cue ball a little much, and it got away. And just when it was looking as though he was at least starting to build some sort of rhythm and momentum in this match, he's absolutely gifted Aranis the chance here to go three clear once more. Yeah, and what happens with these shots if Aranis can get it down, they really start to believe, you know, you can take down FSR. Extension, please. Or believe more, let's say. This is a little in between, not the easiest as far as the speed control. He may pull it a couple rails for the nine in the right side. He rolled it, so that means the nerves are get starting to settle a little bit. Yeah, and. Make no mistake about it. This is a scalp that's there for the taking. He's up against an, a man well below his brilliant best so far today. And he's almost Varanis. halfway to victory already. And Varanis leads by four racks to one. Someone who's been steadily building a reputation, as we've said, 75 in the world, but he really is a much better player than that. This is his debut in the World Pool Masters. Be quite a way to announce himself in this event if he could beat the best player in the world. And he's one of those players, and 
can think of quite a few who fall into this category who were really starting to build some momentum before COVID came along. He was just starting to have his best results. He was doing well in some events in the United States. He'd just been runner-up in the Las Vegas Open. He'd been third at Turning Stone, starting to win some smaller but worthwhile events. And then COVID came along and halted all that momentum. But he has picked it up again since then. Has gone on to good performances in some fairly prestigious events. But nobody, of course, has performed as well in the very biggest tournaments over the last year or so. Rex six. Is this Into man run has to break. world champion, US Open Leading champion, really wants to add this title. But he's going to have to play a lot better if he's to survive the first round because he trails 4-1. I'll tell you, he hit him what looked like just as well as he's hit him in the past racks and now a dry break. So it hasn't been without opportunity, this three-game deficit for FSR, and now another one. He's definitely going to go offensive here. The problem is he can't just simply come straight up and down the table with the pink four there that may kind of block the blue two. So he's certainly not going to play safe. He's going to try and figure out a way to stay aggressive. May have to take a long shot at the two. He may kind of come at the six nine with the cue ball. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to get it. I don't think so. Oh, 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 yeah. Did you feel there was a lot of movement on the shot there? Let's look at it again. Yeah. You mean him himself? Yeah. Movement? Yeah. Well, I, I kind of saw when the timing's off, that happens. And it's certainly been off a few times so far. Okay, in a good position here. Should just come somewhat to the center of the table off the red three with the pink four. And this is one of the shots that really is kind of bread and butter killing the cue ball at these angles. Such a good player that even at 4-1 down, most people would probably still make him favorite. But it's at that point now where if that deficit gets a little bigger, suddenly he becomes the outsider. So these are important moments here. He looks to take care of business in rack six. Yeah, no matter what your ranking is or how well you're rolling, if you make mistakes, you usually get punished. And, you know, a little fortunate to get back to the table. I was kind of worried that he may sit a few racks the way James has been breaking the balls. Should just hold the cue ball here. It could go forward and play below the eight. Most would just stay above it. And he's going to go forward. So now he's got to come across the nine maybe with a high right ball. Just a little speed control. So the world number one still trails in this match, but he is at least starting to get a foothold now. He's won two of the last three racks. Aramis leads trimmed to 4-2. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz needed a few goes to make an impact in this World Masters. Did get to the quarterfinals last year and has taken him some time to settle into this match as well against that man Eight, from the Fred Philippines, Francisco as you can Francisco see notified by that flag there. Was 3 0 down. FSR, he has closed now to 4 2. He breaks in rack seven. Now he's returned the favor with a dry break. And a good opportunity for James. Uh, maybe an early win with a, a 3 9 here and a few shots. But FSR seems to be putting more power into the break than I remember. Maybe he sees something, you know, that other players have done. And I don't think it's any any worry about, of course, our break rule. 
Right, he's got to come to the center of the table here. He wants to get nice and straight on the two. That way he doesn't have to worry about the six. Uh, this Maybe this purple five is going to get the best of him here, and it's close. If he's not snookered, though. He's in a great position just to draw the cue ball up, maybe for a three-nine combo. Now here, with so much congestion, you want to get position as quick as you can, even if you take a little harder shot on the combination. Like It looks like prime positions between Extension, the purple please. five and the brown seven, but that's a little touchy. Even if you had to take a thin combo, like say roll the blue two in and, and stay below or in between the brown seven and the green six with the cue ball. He's going to go for the draw stroke. So a little bit of a gamble. Looks like he did real nice. Well, the early struggles of Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in this match were typified by his miss on a 3-9 combination in rack three. That enables Aaron has to go three clear for the first time in the match. By making a 3-9 combination of his own, he's gone three ahead it's once more. Runners. It's now 5-2. Well, you spotted it early on, and he engineered the situation perfectly. And those early nerves we talked about seem long forgotten. Yeah, a couple shots right there. Of course, nothing too difficult, but a little bit of position play tells you he's a little more settled as well. You know, he had to get a nice shape on the two, not to worry about any traffic, and he made a tough decision, you know, drawing the cue ball off the two to a small gap to play that combination. So James, of course, super confident guy, I think, as a whole, but gaining more confidence as we go. Well, that's it. He's in this position now to pull off what would arguably be the biggest result of his career so far. And key part of the challenge when you've not done something like this before is to believe that you can. He's had good wins. He's had good runs in tournaments, but beating the world number one, one of the biggest events on the circuit would be a huge landmark for him. And he's got every chance to do it because he leads 5-2. And he's broke the balls really well. He's had one dry break, but as far as the way he wants to hit him, he's got to be super happy. And now the one in the side and looks like a playable combination coming off the blue two into the brown seven. Yeah, it is. It is playable. Now the two's going to escape up table. Now the good thing is not much congestion up table, so maybe he just stops his ball here. Let's the two go up one rail near the three and takes a little bit of a long shot. He's got to attack here, though. Extension, I don't think please. the combination is really that missable for this caliber of player. The concern is where is the blue two going? Um, now he's hitting a top English, so I don't know if he's going offensive. Decided to play the safety. He's trying to get behind the three. Okay, it should be something like the blue two into the seven trying to hold the two kind of replace the seven with the two ball then run the cue ball a couple rails back up in Extension behind called. the purple five could play behind the eight and nine but if the speed's off you could surrender an easy shot I like him running the cue ball here Oh, he's way off. That was mishit by some piece. He's going to fluke the two in, but a lot of body movement as I was well, Michael. I say, even more so than the one we remarked upon earlier. 
Yeah, but he missed his mark. Not only, of course, the hit on the two, the speed was off. And he knew it right away as well. Okay. Does have an attacking thin cut on the red three. But where is position? Get it with inside. Really nice. It's going to get maybe elevated. Now the cue ball did escape. You think back to Leicester in the Premier League and all those matches he won and how much in control of everything he seemed to be. Today, even when he's been at the table winning racks, there's always a feeling that he's just clinging on and trying to stay in the match. Yeah, I think, of course, a little apples and oranges when it comes to the PLP and, of course, the Whirlpool Masters. But, you know, he saw some defeats yesterday as underdogs. And I took the show. But the thing is, it wasn't just the Premier League. I mean, that was typical of what we have been oh, seeing absolutely. from them over the last absolutely. six months or so. Absolutely. But some of those events, we did see some early struggles at times. Uh, or, you know, maybe not struggles, but score lines we didn't expect. Yeah, particularly at the U.S. Open, he had some real close run things against the likes of Wu Kun Lin, Alex Kazakis, particularly Carlo Beato in the semi-final. Yeah, and, you know, FSR mentally may be the perfect recipe to be able to handle all these wins, right? But still the pressure grows no matter, you know, how perfect the situation is for a player. like he's going with a high ball here. A little shy. He's okay. Well, we said he's in clinging on mode at the moment. Trying to stop his opponent from pulling too far clear. In that case, mission accomplished. He's back to two behind. It's now 5-3. Now let's have a look at what they're playing for here. Aside from, of course, one of the most prestigious titles in the game. $40,000 for the winner. You can see how quickly it goes up. You get through today, it's 6,000. But after that, 10,500 for the semis. You're practically doubling it then if you get through to the final and then can double it again to get to $40,000 as winner of the World Pool Masters. Sanchez Ruiz, of course, has been picking up the big checks everywhere over the last while. 60,000 for his US Open win in Atlantic City back in October. Same for winning the World Championship in Poland back in February. Had some good fortune along the way in that rack. Yeah, I was gonna mention that as well, that you know, it wasn't so nice, that shot right there for James Aranis. And, of course, FSR re you know, recouping and making a nice out from there. But James will recognize that FSR is struggling a little bit right now. So he's not going to give in. He's going to keep playing the safeties if needed. There's more of the break we're used to seeing. We'll see what the two does. And it's near the cue ball. He spent a lot of time in the arena last night along with David Alcady. They were sitting watching most of the action. Now, is that something they're doing just to fill the time or what do you've been in there trying to pick up something about how the table is playing? Yeah, I see David and, and FSR quite often uh, in the stands at, at these, you know, big events. And, yeah, picking up the speed of the table, maybe the break shot. Of course, we're playing this week with the triangle, right? So a little different with the racking. But definitely anything. And, and sometimes you don't even know what you're picking up, right? 
it's kind of like what you're taught as a spectator in the chair when you're playing a match. You kind of just watch the cue ball. It kind of just tells you the speed. You just get better as it goes on. It fell a little straight here. Looks like he's going to have to draw back for the purple five in the upper left-hand corner. Extension so call. Trying to decide to draw past the seven here. Try and cheat the pocket a little bit, maybe, on the pink four. Yeah, he kind of punched it a little. So, of course, has plenty of angle to get on the six. That shouldn't be a concern, but a little more, more missable, the purple five. Now we'll see how he cues this. If he cues it with a like a low right English, he's got to be a little concerned about the two rail scratch in the lower left corner. I think he's going to run it though. Yeah, it looks like more of a high ball. He's going to catch the nine. Should be all right. Lost the first three racks, and I know he's improved things since then. He hasn't been back to one behind at any stage. He can do it here, though, and just send a little reminder that he's on Arana's shoulder as we head towards the business end of this first round contest. And if he gets out here to cut it to 5 4, how big is that fluke on the two in the last rack? Well, in an elite field like this, you don't expect in any match, really, to have to wait until the ninth rack to see a run out from the break. Now that it has come, though, it's gone the way of the world champion. And he is now just one behind at five racks to four. in this match ever since he lost the opening rack. This is his chance to draw level. Yeah, another one of those great breakoffs with the lowest object ball near the cue ball, that being the blue two. I think he can hold position for the red three in the lower right corner. Doesn't seem to appear to play by the black eight. So he's going to have to elevate the cue a little bit, a little bit of a draw stroke. Shot tells us right there he should tie this match at five apiece. They lay about as sweet as they can, Michael. Yeah, and we talked about his early round struggles and all the close matches he had on his way to winning the U.S. Open. It was a similar enough story when he added the World Championship back in February. As early as his second match to get through to single elimination. It was only 9-7 that he beat Wu Kun Lin. He had close matches against the likes of Torsten Homan, Dennis Grabber, Mario He. They were all within a few racks of him. And even the final against Mohamed Sufi, where he was a big favorite, it was only 13-10 in the end. <coughs> he reaches a half century of balls potted in this match. Look at that, almost twice as many as his opponent, and yet, for at least the next few moments anyway, he's behind. Yeah, James with the early Extension combination call. and then cleaning up after a few mistakes from Ruiz early in this match. Oh, I can't say it enough, though. Well, let me say it again. How's that fluke on the blue two look like at five to two? Well, sometimes that's what you need, isn't it? A moment like that when you're struggling to 
really get started properly in the match. A little bit of help can send you on your way. And now this is going to be, in all probability, back-to-back -back break and runs. Sanchez Ruiz was in danger of looking like second favourite in this match when he trails by five racks to two. But now, very much the favourite again. Level at five all. There you can see the practice room, which is right next to the main arena here. Victor Zielinski, the near side of the picture. Zheng Zhao Wei, they'll be next on after this one. And the winner of that will play the winner of this, which now looks increasingly likely to be Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. We've been waiting for either player in this match, Jeremy, to get a bit of momentum going, but signs are FSR is finally starting to do that now. Yeah, and you know, the, like I said, the break shot's been a huge part of, the of his success track. and maybe even a bigger part uh, of getting out Francesca of a little Sanchez bit of a funk to start this match in the Whirlpool Masters. You know, he did make a good out after that fluke, but but then broke the balls and, and really got a nice starter. Okay, a little kick on the cue ball. The two's going up towards the corner and another nice shot on the blue two. Don't really see a whole lot of issues. He's got to make a nice shot here from the blue two to the red three. He's got some options on the three ball as well. The four's in the center of the table, the pink four. I think he comes across and kind of where he's standing with the cue ball to play the red three in the lower left. Now he has a few options. He can come up for the pink in the side. Not really much congestion, so he can play a little broader angle on the pink in the side. Like to play the pink in the upper left. That way speed control is not really that important. Extension called. If he comes, that's what he's taking his time on. Is realizes uh, if he comes up for the side, he's got to get a proper angle to get on the purple five up on the top rail. Again, this is where you don't try to get so close to the pink four. You understand that if you broaden the angle playing for the side, it's easier to capture the speed. Yeah, I like see how he stayed so far away from it. Very smart. I don't think anyone would have thought this time last year that by now Sanchez Ruiz would be number one in the world, Jeremy. But do you think he comes into an event like this with such an elite field, feeling he's still got something to prove? Or is he past that stage now, having done as much as he has over the last year? Uh, I think... I don't know about prove. I think he just steadily wants to improve overall. Um, he wants to, of course, like any player, once you start to make these achievements, you don't really, you know, you do get some thoughts of I can do some things maybe someone else has never done, but it really starts with just the grind itself, the process of, you know, your practice and, and getting into uh, your matches in the best situation. So I don't think he's that type really. Um, to think, you know, I have to prove anymore, right? But I do think he did have a, you know, personal kind of vendetta with himself through many, many years of not getting maybe the results he wanted. And that's kind of been his never give up kind of, kind of mode. All right, big draw stroke coming on the eight.
Well, that was the last thing that could go wrong. Sanchez Ruiz has not led at any stage in this match. Three racks from the winning line is a good time to hit the front, and that's what he's done. It's a hat trick of break and runs. He leads 6 5. James Aranas in what has become a familiar pose for him over the last 15 20 minutes. Looking on, powerless. As FSR powers on, and this was the key shot, really, of this rack. And, uh, you know, just watching him so much, like everyone has the last, you know, year and a half or something like that. Uh, seems he's getting more settled. I still don't think he's like 100%, like what we've seen so much of. But he's uh, heading in that direction, and a little lead won't hurt. I think we saw Mohamed Sufi sitting behind him there. Went out of the tournament last night. Runner up to Max Lechner. Or sorry, beaten by Max Lechner in the first round last night. And uh, runner up to FSR Rec 12. at the World Championship Sanchez, this year. Sanchez Ruiz to break, leading 6 5. Yeah, and then went, you know, right after that loss to win a Euro Tour and beat FSR in the final. Uh, Sufi is going to be one of the intriguing stories of pool in 2023. 6 5. Oh, a dry break, at least at the moment. Is the cue ball going to agree it is to get James Aranis back to the table with a shot on the yellow one? So this is where James, you know, has to eliminate any mistakes. Looks like to me he can play two rails with a high right spin, trying to play the two in the opposite side pocket, maybe. Speed control is so important. Uh, he did have the corner, and that's actually a better shot. At first glance, I thought the green six was in the way. Should be all right here. Real natural path to draw the cue ball off the right side rail up to the top rail and coming back between the black eight and the red three for position on the three. Key here, no miss, Michael. Extension, please. He's had to wait quite some time to reclaim control of the table. Now, it's a matter of keeping it. Yeah, this should do. And Getting through that three to the four, really, after that nice two balls, the, the work in the rack. You can see the five, six, seven on the bottom end of the table. I mentioned earlier how, like quite a few players, his progress was really stalled by COVID shutting down tournament action. But as I said, when things really got going again, he's had some good performances and long runs and decent events, semi-finals of the International Open towards the end of 2021, beaten by Dennis Orcolio. I got to the final of the Asian Open in Singapore last summer and ran Ko Pin Yi very close. And events like that are just a level below these big matchroom tournaments. Yeah, you hear a lot of the big names in those events, of course. And James is just, you know, like you said, was trending in the right direction, right? Getting a lot of time at the table, getting to play the bigger events. And that's all he's lacking now, is really uh, getting that match time. Yeah, he'd had some good results immediately before COVID. He yeah. was just on the brink, he felt, of making a massive breakthrough. And even about a year or so before that, he'd been runner-up in the Derby City Classic to Skylar Woodward. He probably wants to just pinch the cue ball out a little bit, maybe a hair more angle on the seven. Touch a draw spin. Mm. 
So definitely, you can kind of see him a little more in that working mode now versus what looked like, you know, definitely some nerves to start. Yeah, the big question, of course, will be if he does get close to the winning line, will those nerves come back again? But for now, all he can do is give himself a chance of being in that position. Yeah, a little let up on the stroke there on the seven, so a bit more of a shot on the eight. And that's a huge mistake. Did he get the fluke? Well, what goes around comes around, doesn't it? Because FSR's own turnaround in this match was started with a bit of good fortune. And he's got to settle himself quickly, making a mental error with the shot clock situation and no extension left and a difficult nine ball after a big fluke on the eight. So Sanchez Ruiz had three breaking runs in a row. He followed that sequence with a dry break. One thing to have nerves and miss a ball. I think we've seen it from FSR in this match, to be honest with you. But you can't lose the brain. That's the one that, that has to stay intact and and the one that'll, you know, cause more nightmares, I think, on a loss than a miss ball. I think that was a release of some of that tension coming over to make a bit of a joke with you about it and probably the right thing to do. Yeah, James, really good guy, and he's just always uh, appreciative to be here. Of course, he's he's a killer. He's trying to win this match and win this title, but a real fun, lo loving character. And now stepping back towards the arena. And he will, of course, have the break in this winter breaks format in rack 13. And I'll tell you, I mean, Thank you, the 13th rank. Overall, of course, we're not at six apiece, and that tells six you a lot about each. the match. But I think uh, in most categories, James has kept up with FSR, even though, you know, FSR hasn't been 100%. Yeah, we're starting to get some variety in the break shot. We had a lot of it yesterday in different ways, and, and now more of it here. It's his second try break of the match. Hit him really well again. Well, we saw all sorts of things yesterday. Some eyebrow raising results. And a lot of golden breaks. One thing we didn't have was a close finish. So it looks as though we're heading for our first one of the tournament here. And two dry breaks apiece. And the other ones have been fantastic. We haven't had a ton of break and runs, a few from FSR. A lot more congestion in this rack, though, and you can see the one ball. He does shoot the yellow one. He's going towards the black eight and the red three. And the thing is, you don't want to kind of get pinned on the top rail with the blue two down table. So looks like he's going to attack. Oh, he really ripped into that one. Cue ball's going to get over the purple five, it appears. Maybe a very difficult shot coming. Extra speed, just knowing the, the cue ball was going to cannon into those balls. Extension. He was trying to get it to escape, and that he did. Looks like the blue two does not go by the pink four for the upper left-hand corner. This is difficult here and no easy way to run the cue ball. Not sure what he's even playing really. Uh, trying to go by the pink four. And really nice execution. Oh, 
Well, James could kick softly at the two off the right side rail or his right side rail. Could kick with speed as well. If he's comfortable with the table, I think he soft kicks on the blue two. If not, he'll probably add some speed. Okay. Well, you can see the angle on the blue two, and what will tell us more is when he inspects if the red three goes by the eight and that's the natural position it appears anyways. Tester here. And he's missed it. And Not the hardest of kick shots to the short rail by the purple five, but I think he's got to add a little speed here. The slick table wants to spread a bit. Extension cold. If he's going to hit a high ball, yeah, he's hitting a high ball. And Looks like he's aiming quite a bit wide. That's going to spread a lot, and the experience gets him there, Michael. Ball in hand. What exactly do you mean by that, JJ? The experience of the slick Please table, just it. knowing with the top English, the angle's going to spread right there. And so you either have to take away the top English, hit more of a center ball, or adjust the aim. And I say the experience, but... Even the players that spend so much time on the slick table tend to misjudge that uh, that type of kick shot here that and under, there. It underlines what you were saying earlier, that he's obviously got all the ability. He's got big results in events just below this level. That's perhaps what he needs to take him to the next stage in his career is the experience of these conditions. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's just something you can't duplicate, really, and it's just a matter of, of spending time and understanding it. And of course, it was off of a, a little bit of fortune from FSR, but it's the type of shots you still have to bury. Oh, he came close to the side here. Wow, catching the point. So still a little out of sorts with the stroke. Does he come all the way down or does he just hover past the side for the cut shot? That's a smart shot there. We were talking earlier about some of the close early matches he had on the way to some of his big titles last year. You also think of the UK Open where he lost his first match, went to the loser side and was 6-0 down in his first match there and ended up getting to the final. So with all that in mind, he's not going to be thinking at the moment about how he's playing. It's all about just staying in the tournament in the hope that he can improve. Yeah, and you know, oof. but you can see even there, these are pretty routine shots for FSR and a little fortunate to come away with a shot on the Brown seven and maybe a little give up at impact there. But one thing, anytime you're you're having to, uh, you know, or you're winning all the titles, you're, you're playing as well as anyone and doing incredible things. You have to leave the good and the bad behind. Talked about it a little bit with Lechner yesterday, making all those golden breaks. Easy to have, a, you know, a little mental issues, you know, after, you know, all those ups. Goes a rack clear for the second time in the match at 7 6.
Let's have a bit of a recap of what went on there. Talk us through this, Jeremy. Yeah, I think he knew he missed it right from the get. A little fortunate with the cue ball. James, again, with a little lack of experience here on this type of kick shot. He aimed really kind of for your club table, not making the adjustment. FSR kind of struggled through the rack a little bit, but did get it done and got another one game lead. And we've had a couple dry breaks from the players. And no one can extend that lead late. We'll see what FSR can do here. Rack. Day 14th rack. Francesco yeah, he's Sanchez turned it around after seven racks to six. an alarming start, really, break. in some respects. Now, uh, can he power on to the line? He's made the one. The two's going to end up on the top rail. And I'll tell you, we'll see what he plays here, but you figure him not to go at the nine with the blue two off the cushion with a little bank combination. But if he if he sees a little bit of a backdoor safety there, you may see him go at this nine. I think he probably rolls the two away, the blue two, and puts the cue ball behind the, the red three and the green six. That's the shot that I see that's pretty doable. Cue ball hit the five, so the cue ball is going to get surrendered a little bit, and so's a shot on the blue two. So again, off with the speed, off with the line. Watch the cue ball just shave the purple five just a just a touch. It's the type of shot also the slick table can get you a little bit elevated. Easy to hit it a little thick if you're applying a little right side spin. Oh, he even played it off the nine. Wow. Look at a four nine possibly looming. There's no question about it. He's got to play. The pink four on to the yellow nine. Made a three nine combination into this same pocket earlier in the match. And I think he got the line on the combination pretty perfect with the cue ball. So not much cut on the pink four if any at all. <laughs> Long way out in the end. Yeah, you know, you expect maybe a miss there on that combination, but I thought he would threaten the pocket a little more than that. He may have gotten a little bit of a roll. Extension I think called. FSR can get at the pink four. I'm not sure if he can make it or not. The eight's a little precluding for that top left corner as well. So he's not digging on the cue ball, so that means he's probably attacking. I'm not sure where he was going. He was just trying to get behind the purple five with the cue ball. So a little off angle bank, but one you expect him to attack. Easy to overhit this and have this ball go a little long on you. Oh, now he's leveling out, so that means a safety's coming. I don't think he got where he wanted, and he didn't get the four to the bottom rail either. 
He came over to you earlier and talked about how nervous he was feeling, almost made a joke of it. When you're in that situation and looking for a big landmark victory, are the safety exchanges and the tactical shots more a test of that nerve than the rest of the game? Yeah, and, you know, especially I think he shot a little quickly there. Uh, these are important shots near the end of, you know, the rack or the match. And, and I think a little bit of a problem with the shot clock maybe had him pull the trigger a little quickly and serious problems for Ball FSR. Ball and and talk about the shot clock. That may have been a problem with him there as well. I think absolutely. Stop it. And just when it looked as though the initiative had been surrendered in this rack, it's been handed straight back emphatically to Aranis. What a chance now. Yeah, ball in hand always makes you forget about the mistakes a little easier. I'll tell you, if he can get out here, I kind of feel like maybe a break and run is coming. Yeah, he hasn't had one yet in this whole match. And it's just easy position, one rail up the table. Little light, so he's going to come across, no problem. Now here, stay plenty clear of the nine. You don't want to clip the nine going by and kind of, you know, carry the nine with the cue ball and maybe get snookered. figure James to just pull the cue ball a couple rails near this left side rail. That way he can play an easy two rail position off a of black eight to the nine. And when nerves are high, you want to try and get that natural angles to run the cue ball. Say he got into that quite a bit. Gonna be just fine. Well, what a chance FSR had to be first to the hill at 8 6. But let's be fair, he made a bit of a mess of it. And having been level at 5 all and at 6 all, James Aranas, James Aranas has squared it right. again at 7 all. Comfortably the closest match we've seen so far in this first round of the Whirlpool Masters in Brentwood. Yeah, and he's suffered some losses, you know, at times through some of these you know, wins and, and close wins like the UK Open and whatnot. But and of course, comes losses. There's definitely mistakes involved. But as far as odd mistakes and ones I didn't expect, I think I've seen more of them in this match from FSR than probably like the entire PLP, <laughs> maybe, or, you know, just something, you know, kind of out of the blue, right? Well, last weekend, while most of Britain was talking about the king in pool, it was all about a prince, and that is Joe Prince. Paid his £100 entry fee to rock up at Red Hill for the UK Open qualifier and won it. So he'll be lining up with the biggest names in the Play game, at the break. Copper Box Arena in London and in break. the Olympic area in just a few weeks' time. Such a time of opportunity for any player looking to make a breakthrough. Seven all. Yeah, a couple dry breaks here late. He's the one on the side. There it is. So eyes on the blue two, and it's going to hover over that same side pocket with the three hanging. Great news for James Aranis here in rack 15. He's got an easy starter, an easy position. And to get back to those qualifiers, and great shooting by Mr. Prince to make his way into the UK Open. But those qualifiers are going to play a big part and professional pool from here on out, just as they should. Just like the rankings get you here to the World Pool Masters, those qualifiers are going to get you in the bigger events. Uh-oh. Wow, a lot more threat of the corner there than I expected with the cue ball. Yeah, it's 
an essential part, really, of any legitimate sporting structure that you have a pathway. And now the pathway, in theory at least, goes all the way from playing in the club all the way to playing in tournaments like this. If you're good enough, enter those qualifiers, get your ranking points. Yeah, you can make big moves. I think as things go on with our World Nine Ball Tour, those moves will be a little harder to make, you know, just because so many players will accumulate points and, and, and dollars as they go. But funny position shot here from the pink four to the purple five. He's trying to find a pocket, doesn't pass the black eight, doesn't pass the brown seven. He's gonna try and kill it with a little English and fall behind the purple five. Look at this, the speed control. How is it, Michael? Shot, position shot of the match. Well, we talked earlier about the new challenge that comes when you find yourself potentially on the brink of pulling off a big result like this. And how he would respond to it. As you say, that shot gives good indications in that regard. Yeah, and I think he's fallen to where he doesn't want to elevate the cue, and I think maybe he needs to to hold position for the six. Tight side pockets here at the Whirlpool Masters. And a, what looks like possibly a big break and run. you have a situation like this where the outsider goes out into a lead and then the firm favorite to win the match takes control of it you expect it to fizzle out really from there and the big name to just pull away there will be so much to Aranis credit if he can actually regain the lead here last time he was in front was at 5-4 Tell you, I mean, his biggest mistake, he fluked the eight in after a big miss and made a nice nine ball. It was a fluke by FSR that really got FSR back in it. What a great moment to pull out. The first to break and run of the match. James Aranis will be breaking again on the hill in just a moment. Thank you, Rack 16. James Aranis is breaking on the hill, leading 8-7. I might say this could be some of the biggest five or ten minutes of this young man's life coming up, Jeremy. Yeah, and he becomes a very dangerous player getting through this match. Nerves should settle a little bit. And the one's going to hit the point point, go up in the corner. What's the pink four going to do? It's going to bump the two. So he's got a chance. <laughs> Definitely some issues in this round. Besides trying to take down the best player the planet's seen the last 18 months. A little bit of an issue here, pulling the ball past the four two rails to get on the red three. You can see the purple five, a little bit of an issue later in the rack. Oh, he's got to be happy with that one. Really sweet strike there on the cue ball. Well, of course, in any circumstances, this would be a massive result for him. But if he can do it, by finishing off with his only two break and runs of the match, having fallen behind when he had previously held a significant lead, the amount of belief it's going to give him going forward, not just for the rest of the tournament, but for the rest of the year and indeed his wider career in pool, will be huge. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to keep it simple here. Oh, that one kind of kicked a little bit on him. Should be okay. He's going to probably play a cross side bank on the purple five. A little dangerous trying to play short side position. 
He's really gotten perfect on the pink four to come one rail down the table. And just play speed control. Kind of go right at the eight. This looks like it's going to be perfect, Michael. And now the table's set. Just wants to stun the cue ball out lightly. It's somewhat straight on the seven. He can handle a little angle from above. It's actually gotten perfect here, and FSR's Whirlpool Masters is looking very grim. tournament like this it's such an elite field and so many great players in it the scope for genuine shocks is pretty limited really but this would definitely fall into that category and James has played very steady and yeah. came with the shots when he needed not FSR's best though the defending champion is already out and now, the world champion has followed him through the exit door. James Aranis, the wild card, ranked number 75 in the world, has beaten the best on the planet. He sees off FSR 9-7.